today's talk is about how KNN Engineering transitioned onto Magento 2, went through various points of friction, and worked with us and WebEyes to monitor and move past these blockers. So Emily, why don't you introduce yourself? Of course. Uh, good afternoon. It feels like good morning to me because I'm still in California time. So uh, good afternoon. I'm really excited to be here. It's great to be in an environment where there's so much energy around e-commerce. Um, it's been really fun so far, and it's been really exciting. Um, I am Emily Glass. I'm the director of analytics at KN Engineering. Um, I've been in e-commerce for around 10 years now, which is showing my age a little bit, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Um, I started in e-commerce actually as a marketing copywriter. Um, my degree is in uh, English Lit, of all things, which uh, that was one of the only ways to make that useful. And over time, I transitioned into uh, SEO and some technical SEO, and then over time, uh, slowly evolved into more areas of e-commerce uh, and digital marketing analytics. Um, I started at KN Engineering about almost six years ago, um, and because it was an automotive brand, I was really excited to have the the opportunity to join the team. Um, in college, I was riding my motorcycle to work every day, which my mom hated, uh, but I had a, a K&N air filter on it, and so when that position opened up, um, I was really excited to join, and, and since then, it's been kind of a wild ride, uh, a little bit of a struggle at times. We'll get into that, um, but that's a little bit about me, and uh, I'll pass it over to Mayor. Hello, I'm Mayor Bianchi, founder of Meyer. We're a web development and design agency based in Brooklyn, New York. I've been working with the Magento platform since 2010 uh, in a merchant capacity as a developer and then later as an agency founder. And I'm an Adobe Commerce expert, business practitioner, and uh, also passionate about raising awareness about heart disease in the e-commerce community. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll pass it over to Uri. Thank you. Hi, uh, Uri Strauss, uh, founder of WebEyes. Um, I came from Israel, uh, so a lot of us, so if you're tired, I'm very tired. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be talking, should yeah, I? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm up since uh, 2 o'clock anyway. So um, I owned a uh, development agency uh, for many years, or something like five years. We um, developed all kinds of stuff. Part of it was e-commerce. Um, my personal pain was working with business people, understanding that we may cause issues. Um, many fingers were pointed at us. <laughs> <laughs> um, we didn't have good answers. We had all the monitoring solutions that you're familiar with. Uh, New Relic, App Dynamics, Hotjar, et cetera. We, we, uh, we tested them all out. We didn't have an understanding of what really is happening, where there's friction, if we're causing friction, what we need to do to fix it. Prioritize based on lost revenue and not based on how many times something is happening. Um, so began the journey in 2019. Um, and that's what WebEyes does, that's what we do. We detect friction, we quantify lost revenue, prioritize based on the lost revenue, um, and actually we have a module which um, fixes it, not on a tech level, but engages with the customer while they're struggling. So if there's a coupon code failure, we pop up a coupon code that works. If there's a uh, payment failure, we'll uh, pop up a chat. If there's a 404, we'll redirect. Just to patch it up until it's actually fixed. Awesome. So uh, how many of you have heard of k &N filters or k &N engineering and use their parts in your what? automotive or home filtration? Oh, that's a good we've handful. Got, so we've got quite a few. So okay. for those of you that aren't familiar with the brand, Josh, can you kindly roll the video? Any second now. You got it. <laughs> How much bargain to pay? So, this, this is sponsored by Tide. This is a consumer packaged goods conference, the subliminal. Nothing about Magento here. That didn't happen yesterday. Sorry, folks. That also didn't happen. Here we go. All right. As a weight. The horsepower and torque you always knew was there. Just waiting to make every try. Thrilling. Track tested. Off road proven. Performance for everything you drive. 
Drive Better with K and N. So now you know, <laughs> Emily. <laughs> why don't you tell the the group a little bit about the history of K and N's e-commerce and how you ended up on Magento? Sure thing. Yeah, a little bit of influx of masculine energy there. <laughs> um, if you didn't gather from the video, um, k and is primarily an automotive company, um, automotive aftermarket. Um, we have recently transitioned also into home and residential air filtration and also data center filtration, which is a big emphasis um, moving into 2024. Um, and I'll get into a little bit of that later. But to get into some of the history, so the company was founded in 1969. Um, the bulk of the business is still at retail. So um, through Walmart, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Napa Auto Parts, Advanced Auto Parts, um, and also some internet resellers like Amazon, of course, um, Summit Racing, and so on. So the, the bulk of the business is still at retail. Um, we've had an e-commerce presence since 2003. It was a homegrown solution. Um, and we transitioned to Magento in 2018. Um, whew, that was a that was an exciting year, <laughs> right? We, we've learned a lot of lessons along the way. You know, the the title of this was uh, from pain points to uh, progress, I think. And um, a, a better two words might be dumpster fire for those <laughs> few years between those brackets there. Um, Isaac, he's our senior developer sitting here on the front line. We've been through the, the war together a little bit. Um, but in 2018-2019, uh, we were working on the Magento 2.2 upgrade. Um, we, we struggled a lot with that one. And, and that was, I think actually, you had maybe just come on board. Uh, I was also new. We were sort of thrown into the middle of a project that had already started and we were trying to find our feet. Um, had some really major revenue impacting issues on e-commerce that year with that upgrade. Um, so, some really significant ones actually. Um, after that, we had a managing um, service partnership um, they recommended that we move into a headless solution. It was some of their proprietary technology. And it was really interesting listening to Josh and David talk about consultancies and how those should work in the ideal world because uh, we definitely made a lot of mistakes. I think the, the story here is that um, we're, we're being very real and raw and honest that we did not make all the right decisions over the course of those few years. Um, and so that headless transition uh, created some additional issues, and, and we'll talk about that um, in a little bit more depth later with how uh, Vermeer and, and WebEyes helped with that. Uh, but WebEyes came in to the picture about 2021. We were already on uh, the headless solution at that point, which I think it took a year and a half to integrate. It was something insane. Um, and so they came on and then we had the Magento 2.4 upgrade in 2023 that was finished. Um, in 2023, we also decided to transition off of Headless, um, or it might have been the end of 2022. It was in that correctly. time period. It was yeah. right in there um, for, for quite a few reasons, um, not the least of which that it was very, very expensive. Um, we had, how best to put this? <laughs> we had some struggles in, in communication with the con consultancy that we were working with. And like Josh was talking about in his presentation, it's really important when you have these consultancy partnerships that um, you're able to rely on them for thought leadership and to lead the dis discussion and lead the path forward. Um, I felt, and I think most of us realized toward the end, that we were just creating tasks for that agency to complete rather than really relying on their experience and, and thought leadership in that space, um, which was a balance, obviously. But we eventually, we wanted to also expand um, into international markets once again. Um, it was really the solution, the headless solution was not really scalable to do that, especially since just on the US side, it took about a year and a half to complete. So we were adding up all the international sites that we um, needed to upgrade and thinking about, you know, 
maybe we'll be done in 2045, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just and wasn't going to work. So um, that was where we had some partnerships come in that really helped strengthen our decision making, the data we were looking at, how we were measuring performance. Um, and it's really difficult when you have so much sunk cost into a project. This was an expensive implementation, They're like eye-watering amounts of money. And then you decide to move away from that, which was a tough sell at the executive level to say, hey, we tried this, but for the future of the company to grow, to do the things that we want to do, we need to move away from this. Um, so that puts us kind of where we are now, which is a very exciting year, and I'm going to get into more of what we're doing a little bit later, but yeah. that's sort of the brief overview of where we came from, and I feel like I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, jo Josh, can you kindly advance to the next slide? So what Emily just spoke about, um, can you also tell us a little more about the specific moments of when you transitioned to Headless and kind of how you were, the expectations were, sure. and, and also just some context for everyone that Canon ha is a multinational corporation. They service over 50 countries. It's a very complex Magento 2 implementation. Mm -hmm. Has, uh, you know, like 64 websites and multiple store views and, store, and, uh, and storefronts, and additionally, multiple brands. So they're also operating other brands like Airaid, AM Intakes, which are other known performance automotive brands. And so the headless implementation that was done was only covering the US canfilters.com. So mm -hmm. imagine you have other stakeholders who need their, need their needs met, and then what pressure that puts on the development team or the rest of the organization. So maybe speak a little bit about that and how, yeah. you know, how the headless created this friction, and then we can yeah. get into how WebEyes was brought into that process. Thanks for reminding me. He caught All a good. few of the things that I forgot about, like our sub-brands. Whoops. Um, but yes, yeah, so KNN is obviously a very large global brand. Um, our our e-commerce site, we've still seen, miraculously, we've still seen growth since 2019. Um, despite all of the challenges that we faced in these headless integrations and taking it off and Magento and doing all of this um, upgrade project work, um, the thing about that and, and the things that are specific to this business, um, we have over 10,000 SKUs. I think it's closer, it's maybe 11,000 at this point. Um, it's a vehicle application-based business. So one of the challenges there is that somebody coming to shop to the site, they can't just land on any air filter, right? You have mm -hmm. to perform a vehicle search to figure out the one that fits. Um, so there's always pain points there. One of the goals of the headless integration was to make the site faster, which it did. Um, but at the expense of the internal team having a lot of control over that proprietary technology that we were licensing from that third party, uh, it made it very difficult. And especially when we're quite a small team, um, we were definitely resource limited. And, and so I think for larger companies, the headless is a solution that really makes sense. I'm a firm believer in headless. It just was not the right solution for us at that particular moment in time, um, specifically because we weren't able to scale it um, to focus on the international stakeholders, like you were saying, who were quite displeased that all of our resources were going to the U.S. And, storefront only. And contextually also, the transition to Magento wasn't necessarily beneficial to the international at the time as well. Agreed. So that was yeah. like a double down. Yeah. 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 So we were really neglecting that side of the business just based on resource limitations. Um, but once again, despite that, somehow, it's a miracle, we still saw sales growth between 2019 and 2023. We've had growth every single year, um, except for 2019, which we don't talk about, right? That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad year. Uh, we still have nightmares about it. <laughs> Isaac is over there covering his eyes. Um, but we still have seen growth, and so I think one of the take-homes for, for all of us is that especially when you're starting from, from this place where you're constantly chasing bugs, you're constantly chasing fixes, we're trying to put all of our resources into an upgrade project, we weren't really able to focus on the overall strategy and the optimization that we wanted to make 
to really make the user experience better, to um, reduce friction on the site, to increase the branding experience. We weren't focused enough on those things when we were chasing problems here and there based on the resources that we had at the time. Yep. So we had to be smart, right? We had to figure out how can we bring in data to speed up decision making? What partners can we bring in that are going to be able to help our really small but mighty team get things done uh, in a way that makes sense as we kind of pare down the tax, tech stack and then build it back up again? Yeah, and that's a perfect chance to say this is where WebEyes was brought into the yeah. conversation. So. As Uri mentioned before, WebEyes is an instrumentation and monitoring platform that uses AI and helps you find what is going on in the friction in your website. So giving you insights that a normal analytics tool will not provide, mm -hmm. such as showing where the pain points are, or when this part of the application has a failure, how it directly impacts your conversion rate, which I know is really important to merchants, obviously. And so we introduced as B Meyer, we started working with them for context. We were the agency brought in to help build the back end APIs to support the headless transition. We were not in the strategic seat of making that decision, but we were brought on as an expert Magenta development agency to help make that project successful. And so WebEyes was the tool that we recommended as they monitored the transition to headless and how to make that, you know, uh, to, to monitor what was going on. Exactly. So, yeah, so we were brought in and we were told that there's a uh, headless implementation which uh, has issues. Uh, we are used to hearing this kind of uh, a pitch and when we start beginning working with, uh, with customers because we always, um, everyone knows there's always issues. Um, they feel that their site is the worst. Um, that's how everyone feels. It was true um, though. <laughs> everyone thinks that too. Yeah. Um, everyone feels that you know there's always stuff happening and there's stuff that they know that they know and there's stuff that they know that they don't know and there's always stuff going on. They're not. So we were brought in um, to, to analyze what's going on. Um, we helped with that with stabilizing the, um, uh, the US shop, the headless shop. Um, these are, I mean, there are more of course, but this is more, the, let's say, the business. So we, we capture both business and tech issues. Business would be Login issues, payment issues, at the card, out of stock, um, quantity not available, et cetera, et cetera. Plus all kinds of tech issues. If it's a JavaScript fail cause, load time, core vitals, et cetera. Um, so these are just a few points that we uh, detected while, um, while monitoring, actually before and after the migration. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, we detected um, conversion issues for, for uh, 400 errors on the payment, which was, you can see, like 52% in conversion rate was lost just due to these 400 errors. Um, and then that led to more development resources being burned on mm -hmm. the headless team having to fix the brain tree integration. Right. So continue, yeah. sorry, I just wanted exactly. context. So one of the biggest problems is understanding where, I mean, development, there's always less development than bugs um, and, and uh, future projects. Mm -hmm. So it's what you want to focus on um, and, and what's causing the, uh, what will cause the biggest impact. Um, so, for example, we had, we saw like a very high coupon rate failure. Everyone has coupon failures. That's what happens. There's all kinds of scans and there's honey and there's all kinds of apps. But this is a huge number um, um, of failures. Um, login issues and, and by the way, this is not a bug. This is on average 40% of customers try to log into a website and forget their password. Mm -hmm. Okay, the easiest, simplest. Um, the message is unclear. Um, they forget, they even have um, a user, they try to register, user already created, registered, and then they go back, they try to reset the path. There's this whole loop of, uh, of issues that, that, that can be solved with different messaging, with um, single sign-on, uh, you know, uh, social, uh, social logins, um, um, magic link, or whatever. There's all kinds of ways to bypass that stuff. Um, we saw all kinds of, actually, four or four pages on the, uh, on the uh, TNCs which people love for some reason. We're reading at KNN. You need to read the fine print. <laughs> yeah, I'll just scroll down like 100 pages. And um, all kinds of third parties that were breaking conversion rate. There's always failures. Mm -hmm. The most important lesson here, there's always stuff that's happening just to prioritize based on what's impacted conversion and costing uh, revenue. That's why it's called web eyes. It's another yeah. set of eyes watching mm -hmm. your store. The eyes of the web, yeah. So, um, So now, um, 
this is this part, if you want to introduce it maybe, uh, is about the role of BMeyer, the web development agency, and how we work with KN. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know, I think at this point we we realized we had to be very selective about the partners we chose. Um, we've been extremely selective in the last couple of years, actually, um, with who we bring into the fold and uh, transparency and communication, all these things are very critical to us. Um, I know you've probably worked very heavily with Isaac over here, who I need to call out again because um, he's amazing. He's, he's really lifted uh, a lot of the load of, of all of these upgrades and everything himself. So I have to, to give credit where that's due. Um, but he needed help, right? And so this is where uh, B. Meyer came in to add some extra hands and some extra insight. Yep. Yeah, so let me tell you a little bit about the journey of how we came to work with KNN and how we've been jumped onto this roller coaster as it was <laughs> climbing up and about to, Just you know, plummet. go for a wild ride. So, but then there was loops and, you know, the right end. It's so, fun. it's been fun. So, in 2020, 2020, so this is Q4 of the first year of the pandemic, uh, we were brought on to assist, like I said, uh, creating the headless APIs to support this. Uh, using a tool, View Storefront Bridge, it's relevant right now, but basically we were there to help implement this system. So at, in doing that, we had to make all of KNN's custom logic compatible with the headless environment. So imagine carb compliance, vehicle search, all these esoteric automotive industry needs had to be made compatible. So once again, that was a technical debt created just by going headless, because they already mm -hmm. had this working on their non-headless and now it had, the work had to be done to repair it. So that's what led to the longer timeline of implementation. Through that time, we got to, we came in working with the CIO at the time and Isaac and the development team. I'm also gonna shout out Isaac. Isaac <laughs> is the man. And so from there, we were also worked with Emily's team, who was on the e-com team. And then Canaan has a very uh, good harmony amongst their stakeholders. There's also a, the customer service team, uh, he, the, the head of the customer service was like the wise old owl because he <laughs> had been there the longest, had been on the legacy platform. So he was kind of like the barometer for mm -hmm. the situation as well because he had been there the whole time. And then through that part of the journey, that's where WebEyes was brought in because they were concerned about, hey, how are we gonna monitor what's going on? Yeah. So WebEyes was implemented on the headless. And then once it was on headless, as Emily mentioned, it was costly to maintain. And here's something that some of you in the audience might be familiar with is they were on a legacy version, end of life of Magento 2. So now they're on Magento 2.2, they're an Adobe Commerce merchant, they're a big corporation, and they don't have the security or the, you know, the support of Adobe. So then we, ha we were also hired to do a massive upgrade project, mm -hmm. completely upgrading all the custom modules, third-party extensions, the themes for the non-headless sites, and make sure that the headless APIs that we had built were now up to date for 2.4, 2.4 major architectural shift with Magento. So from there, then the business decided, hey, we're going to scrap the headless. Now that we're more compliant, there had been a uh, new CIO uh, named Iqbal Rana, who we've been collaborating with. He, he also manages the entire tech portfolio. And so the attempt was done to standardize so that we weren't using a proprietary headless stack. Mm -hmm. So then we had to then rebuild the site again on non-headless, a Luma-based theme, because it was too risky to go for Hoofa or any of the newer technologies at the time. And that is how KNN and and B. Meyer collaborated using WebEyes as well, because the day we transitioned from the headless back to the non-headless theme, WebEyes was used to monitor the errors, the sales, because we had to have a mm -hmm. seamless transition. So, you know, over the one to two days of that transition, it was essentially smooth. And that's where having an additional mm -hmm. tool, another point of verification besides Google Analytics or besides your warehouse tracking system and your expected forecast, they were able to, you know, make it happen. And so through that collaboration, now we're able to look forward and add new features, right? Exactly. And expand the brand and not just stay stuck on this seesaw roller coaster. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it feels very good to be on a stable platform now. We're not on a house built of sticks anymore. Uh, the wind was about to blow it over. And I, I do want to also call out, I think collaboration is really the theme of what we've been talking about today. Um, so important. Collaboration and also visibility. I think measurement for us was absolutely key to getting stakeholders on board, especially with 
this headless transition. Because when we're looking back from the stakeholder perspective, from all of our perspective really, the question is what's gonna be different about this integration or this upgrade or this change than the upgrade that we tried before that failed? What are we gonna do differently this time? Um, and that was really where, um, of course, Bumeier coming in, being very accountable with what they could deliver, and of course, WebEye is giving us the ability and empowering us to make data-driven decisions quickly. Um, we had a lot of data, that's the other element of this. You know, we have GA4, there's obviously analytics in Adobe itself, but being able to pull that into one place, aggregate it, see things more or less in real time, um, made us very agile to make decisions quickly and to also feel comfortable making those decisions that we weren't just gonna drive straight off a cliff, which we'd done that before and I don't really wanna do that again. Yep. Um, so getting into 2024, this is where it gets exciting. And um, some of you, if you have your devices with you, you probably were already looking at the k and Filters website. Um, it's ugly, I know, we're working on it. Uh, <laughs> but that's one of the optimizations that we're focusing on for 2024 is a big site redesign project. It's in process right now. Um, hopefully by Q2, we're gonna see a really beautiful new reskin site with um, conversion much more streamlined. And the only reason we're able to do this is that we were able to pull back all the resources that we were bleeding uh, into maintaining or upgrading or doing this tech stack issues. Now we're in a stable place where we can actually move forward. Um, right now, and, and we were talking about um, design language in, in the keynote uh, speech, and I thought it was interesting because right now I think our design language is kind of giving boomer, right? It's a boomer <laughs> website. Uh, we wanna bring it a little bit more <laughs> into uh, the current decade. And that's been a big priority for us, um, but we just haven't been able to do it over the past few years with everything that was going on. So this is a particularly exciting year for me because I think this is where we're gonna see the most impactful change in the business. We're gonna see um, conversion growth, and especially with the fact that we grew, despite the fact that the overall layout and user experience of the site didn't significantly change over those years, which tells me that there's a lot more potential yet to be untapped. Um, and of course, I have to just mention our global business. So uh, we are expanding heavily into the HVAC filtration market. So we now offer washable home air filters, which is super cool. I have one in my house. Um, and also data centers, which is probably the biggest expansion for the company in the last couple of years um, with washable filters for data centers. And right now, um, they're piloting with uh, Google and Apple and Microsoft and a bunch of big uh, companies. So super exciting um, and looking forward to also finding ways to help um, drive those types of sales on the e-commerce platform as well. Yep. So looking forward to it. it it's, and it's, a, it's an exciting time and also just addressing the European market and international markets. Yep. Now finally we I forgot about platform. them again. It's all good. <laughs> it's been, a, it's been a, a long morning. So, um, you know, just in summary, this was all about collaboration, getting impactful results, the journey, which many of you could be familiar with, the shift, the role of agency and um, brand collaborations and how that is so essential to the success of Magento, specifically as a platform if you don't have a total in-house engineering team, mm -hmm. and then identifying pain points using third parties like WebEyes to help bridge the gap of information. And that's really what this story was about, and we yeah. hope you found value in hearing this case study. And while we still have a slight a bit of time, we would like to take a question or two from the audience. Uh, does anyone have anything they want to ask or anything they would like clarified? Oh, you, sir. So I'll let Emily address the first part of this question. Sure, absolutely. So I think some of the major takeaways that we had, it was also about the speed of being able to 
um, make some of these analytical decisions because things like errors at checkout, um, we, we certainly had access to those things in other places, but the ability to see what was most conversion impacting I think is something that's really unique to WebEyes um, based on kind of their proprietary technology. It, it's very unique in that respect that yep. we could see what was having the greatest impact on revenue and we would prioritize that way. Uh, and hit things as, as quickly as we possibly could. Yep, and, and I would just like to add on the development side of that, I don't know how many of you are familiar with, it's broken, right? Like it's broken, it's broken. But how do you know if it's broken for one person, broken for a hundred, broken for the whole site? Mm -hmm. So seeing the actual percentage that this conversion loss makes or this error is experienced by this many people and it's on your PDP page yeah. or your PLP page and it helps you actually dissect which parts of the website are affected. So like you said, you can effectively prioritize. So, unfortunately, we're out of time, but um, our information is available. You can uh, find me on LinkedIn, uh, Mayor Bianchi, WebEyes. We, we, we both have boots outside. We'll be here all day. Our teams are here. And then Emily, who we reached through k and Filters and is also attending the conference. So, we really appreciate everyone Thank listening. Everyone have yeah. a great lunch. Thanks so much.